the golden age of gaming is right now, baby! Pretty odd thing for a nostalgia channel to say, right? But please, hear me out. I got a lot of fun and positive things to say and that'll hopefully help you to see my point of view on this. I could say some negative stuff too, of course, as anybody could, but that's not what this channel's about. I'm all about upbeat content, sharing, current. To that end, you will notice as we go along that I am going to be labeling all the clips on this video, so you know what game it is. Uh, and that's because I hope you might spot a game that gives you the big nostalgia, or maybe you just see something that you think looks cool and you want to check it out. I got a lot to say on this, so I've split the video into a few sections. Uh, let's get rolling with. This here is Disaster Report. The first in a series of great, janky budget games which you should definitely check out. The premise in this scene is pretty straightforward. There's been an earthquake and our hero character, Keith, has noticed another person stranded across the highway in a bus that looks set to fall. Now if Naughty Dog or Rockstar did this, there would be tense music, constant dialogue, and probably some bespoke animations to show that my character was stressed and all that. Which would be realistic, but that's not for me. For me that ain't fun. I like this uncanny vibe here. Check out how my boy animates just like he would in any other situation. No stress, no drama, there's no dialogue or music either. Silent as the grave, you might say. Uh, except for the worst footstep sound ever recorded when this guy moves. Uh, no time limit either, uh, the woman doesn't scream or tell you to hurry, which is pretty weird. And I like that, in a kind of Lynchian way. You could imagine something like this in Twin Peaks, a person in terrible peril, but all the townsfolk do is kind of smile warmly at them and keep walking around. Uh, maybe Agent Cooper steps in and gives a big thumbs up. It's odd, is what I'm saying. Sparse too, like an empty Gary's mod map, which is something else that I like exploring. Maybe talk about that more in future videos. Uh, but now, I can totally get how this kind of underproduced weird vibe wouldn't be for everybody, but it is definitely for me. And that's why I'm so glad that we now have the means to go back and check out these jank bangers whenever we want. Now, my original idea for this first section here was to talk about how classic games are all digitally available these days and how good that is, but instead of that, let me spit some facts at you. Not every game has to be the best example of its genre. Not every game has to be a classic. Not every game has to even be good. What? That's right, it's okay for games to just be okay. Flawed, weird, clunky, maybe even a little generic. They can still have their charm. And it's okay to say that games are okay too. You don't have to be a snarky internet comedy man pissing your pants about how a game isn't 60 FPS or whatever, because fucking check this out. <laughs> accept that some things aren't perfect and we can still find many positives in them. Come on, that weird little rescue scene in Disaster Report just there, that was pretty darn unique, right? The point I'm trying to make is that I'm no stranger to falling in love with games that either nobody's ever heard of, nobody liked, or which are just seen as generally a little bit lacklustre. One of my all-time favourite games is Blue Stinger. I have more happy memories of playing Siphon Filter than I do Metal Gear Solid. I actually liked One Piece World Seeker. I even liked Left Alive. Caution, the enemy is approaching. <laughs> but it doesn't stop there. If you watch my channel, then you'll know I vibe with all kinds of B and C tier shit, and I know that there are plenty of other folk out there who do too. In the modern world, we are catered for, with many old and weird titles being available through Steam and various other online outlets. I'm just going to say Steam generically as a catch-all thing going forward. Or failing that, the emulation scene now is stronger than it's ever been before. Things have changed since, say, 2010 when the oft maligned 7th gen was in full swing. I'm not shitting on the 7th gen by the way, I love the Batman Arkham games and some of the other stuff that came out around that time. My major problem with games at that time was the focus on Grey World Bald Angry Man American Shoot Bang kind of games which left very little room for offbeat, wacky games to get promoted, and so a lot of those things slipped under the radar. Ah! 
Hello. Oh. Hello. Plus, emulation was pretty janky and Steam had barely gotten going, I think, so unless you had your old consoles, you basically had to suck it up and play the bald man game or go wanting. And that was a real shame. It turned me off games for a little bit. I'm not going to say anything about gaming culture here because I don't really think such a thing exists. Uh, people of all walks of life enjoy games. I do, my wife does, my friends do, other people do. We can all be very different people and still enjoy the same hobby. But as a game enjoyer, who grew up with stuff like Sonic and Rystar and then later kind of Resident Evil and Siphon Filter, etc., I felt that I no longer had the option to play the kinds of things that I enjoyed. Smash cut back to modern day now. I can keep on trucking with Toy Commander, God Hand, Echo Knight, Ring of Red, Machinex, Galerians, Decap Attack, and yes, Disaster Report, without ever having to pop my head up and give a second thought to the big AAA malarkey that's going on, unless it's something I particularly care about. And that's a pretty beautiful place to be. I guess the point I'm making here is around preservation. Like in old music and old movies is considered totally valid, and that's why so much archive work's been done to preserve those things. Any day of the week I could throw on the TV and see Clark Gable or John Wayne or Marlon Brando. All these radio stations will still give me Elvis and Muddy Waters, because people at the time felt like that stuff was worth preserving. But that attitude didn't really filter down into games until more recently. Games now, especially more cinematic ones, are considered to be a valid art form, and are preserved accordingly. As I mentioned, with the advent of decent emulation and Steam type stuff, we can all get our rocks off now in our own special little way. You want weird janky stuff? You go for it. You want the big AAA stuff? It's there. You want anything in between? It's all there for you. So now we know the kind of older games that I still enjoy firing up in my spare time, but believe it or not, I do still like new stuff too. So here we go. I am a big nostalgia boy, as you could probably infer from a guy who calls himself Dreamcast Enjoyer. And yet, some of my favourite games of all time actually came out in like the last five years or so. And the reason I discovered these games is largely thanks to the huge changes in the way we consume media. For instance, I never actually watch TV anymore. I only watch YouTubers talk about games, like how you're watching me now. Or sometimes I'll watch a show or a movie on Netflix, and thus, nowadays, hype for a game can only go so far. No more overbearing game journalists acting as de facto tastemakers. No more overwhelming marketing push shoving unique and quirky titles to the side. YouTube will occasionally advertise something to me that I'll generally ignore and that's it. And on the flip side of that, said YouTube game folks that I watch will often convince me to check out stuff that I never would have thought of otherwise. And Steam even comes through sometimes with that discovery queue, although not always. Don't get me wrong, big companies still oversaturate the market with certain IPs, but at least now it doesn't drown out other options. I personally will never play Fortnite no matter how much it's advertised. No big loss to them, I don't think I'm exactly the target demographic. But if others are enjoying it, and that's fine by me, just so long as I still got access to all my weird little games over here. Promotion for one thing no longer means starvation for another, I guess is what I'm saying. I like how indie game studios have become increasingly prevalent over the last decade or so, because it means that every taste is catered for no matter how niche. I got a buddy who plays all these super esoteric deck builder games with visual novel elements like turn-based conversation sim text adventure shit and I got no time for any of that, but I'm sure glad it's out there for people like him who dig it. And likewise, in the last few years some of my very favourite games have dropped, those being Aragami, Astral Chain and Sable. Now, Astral Chains by Platinum Games, which is pretty damn big, so I don't think I can really play the indie card there exactly, but Linsworks, who made Aragami and its sequel, which is also good, are a small Spanish team of like 10 or something like that, I think. Uh, likewise, Sable was made by a small French company, Shedworks, named because they started their work out of a damn shed. That's punk rock as fuck. In a 2010 climate, Maybe these games would have been buried under Gears of War 372, but now I can find them and play them and I can bloody well enjoy them. One subgenre that has gotten mad traction over the last decade or so is life sim stuff. Animal Crossing no doubt did its part for this, but then you got Stardew Valley and Harvest Moon and whatever else is out there. I like how rich and deep and very bespoke this stuff has gotten though. Uh, check this out, in Alba, I'm a young girl on holiday on a Spanish island and I'm making it my mission to befriend and help and catalogue all of the local wildlife. 
Whilst in Calico over here, I am a magical cat cafe owner who rides around on a giant capybara. This is the kind of shit that wouldn't have flown outside of Japan in days gone by, but now we can all share in its whimsical charm. Early access is a pretty wonderful thing too, in my opinion. I've seen some people whine about how oh, they only want a game when it's finished, and that's fine, but the beauty of this golden age of gaming is that we have that choice. I personally dive straight in this year on two very cool early access games which I both feel are great just as they are. The first one of those is Lunacid, which is uh, by the incomparable Akuma Kira. It's a love letter to old FromSoft, specifically Kingsfield and Shadow Tower. It plays just like those games too and it's got super cool aesthetic geary vibes. Highly recommend it. The other one is Dread Delusion, which is basically spooky Morrowind. I don't want to say too much about the lore in either of these games because they're both very well written and have cool surprises hidden in every nook and cranny waiting for you to discover. So if either of these look like your kind of thing then do yourself a favour and jump in. So we've looked at the availability of cool older games, we have looked at the awesome modern games that are out right now. What could be next? Video games mean a lot to me. I'm glad they've had a chance to survive and thrive. The old games are now preserved, as they should be. The modern games are getting their chance to be weird and experimental. And the future really does look bright. Of course, there'll always be super lame trends that kill off beloved IPs, like how Square are moving into the NFT business, but I really do think there's a lot to feel optimistic about right now. Because of what I said in parts 1 and 2, you can hopefully see that I feel like the sky's the limit for games. New ideas are flourishing and some older franchises are getting a chance to come back to. Remember the influx of Silent Hill news we got late last year? So just to round out, let me tell you some of the stuff that I'm looking forward to right at this very moment. The end of 2022 saw the release of three games I'm completely hyped out of my mind for. I haven't played any of them yet, but what a feeling to be excited for games again. Sonic Frontiers is an obvious choice for me, and so far it looks exactly like my kind of thing. Solar Ash has finally dropped on Steam, which is wonderful news since I sold my PS4 and I've got no intentions of getting a 5. Automaton Long it has finally reached Steam, where I can scoop it up. That one, in case you didn't know, is a kind of weird PS1 or N64 exploration kind of a game with minimalist combat. I don't know how to describe it very well and I don't really know a whole lot about it, which I think is probably for the best because it looks like the kind of game you just want to go in blind and learn about the world. In 2023, I am most looking forward to Jet Set Radio 3, aka Bomb Rush Cyberfunk, which looks set to inspire a whole new generation of Rudies. But I do have a Jet Set video coming out soon, so I'll talk more about that there. I don't even know how I stumbled across these next ones, but uh, Chance of Senna looks set to blow my balls up with its beautiful cell shaded temples and puzzles. And Labyrinth of the Demon King looks like a super spooky blend of Silent Hill aesthetic mixed with Kingsfield gameplay and filtered through feudal Japan. No doubt, it will rattle me bones. Another thing that I should say looking forward to the future is, with the advent of tools like Unity, anybody can have a go at making their own game, so not just indie studios now, but just literally individuals who have a core idea that they want to get out into the world can do it. they got those tools. I remember reading an interview with Tony Domenico, the guy behind Petscop, and he said something along the lines of, if you can get movement right in a game, you know, the, the idea of movement feeling good, then you're halfway there. And that's pretty cool because you can tweak, you can fiddle around with Unity, you can get that movement feeling good, and then you can just build your aesthetic on top of that. And I'm looking forward to seeing what people come up with in the future because already there's great ideas out there every single day. But folks, what I'm saying is that the golden age of gaming is right now. And I do hope you agree. Until next time, my friends, stay golden.